I call... Oh, the Greens haven't had a call. In fairness, colleagues, I call the Honourable Member the Terry Atoure. Ten Akwe. Ten Akwe, Mr Chair, and Ten Akwe to Fari. I just want to follow on from Mr Mallard's point because I think he raises some real concerns and it was great to hear the uh, analysis in a bit more detail about the fact how the impact of the provision that prevents the Official Information Act from applying to charter schools really does play out for the public's knowledge. What I think I heard the Minister say in her response was that, in effect, schools will be able, these, these charter schools will be able to establish for themselves the nature of their reporting, that they will set their own process and procedures. Well, the Minister might want to take a call later to clarify, but she did say that they will decide essentially what and how they report on matters that, that's right, that's right, the confirmation coming from the side of the House. They will decide what and how they report. And any information they choose not to report to the Ministry is information they will hold themselves and therefore not be open to any public scrutiny. And absolutely, the public are entitled to know what is happening with the money that is going to charter schools. What, $19 million has been allocated in this budget alone, just, just the beginning. So it is, it is clear that not only does the Minister expect us to believe that the contracts that uh, the Ministry will have with these schools, schools will be genuinely open and transparent, because it certainly hasn't been the case um, till now, that somehow we're expected to trust the cowboys who will be riding in to take out, to set up charter schools to make a pr private profit, uh, uh, should be trusted with their own self-reporting and that their own information and the holding of it. So it does beg the question, um, I agree from Mr Meller, that why is it that this government is so obsessed with hiding information from these, about these charter schools? Why were they prepared to make this um, major constitutional breach that, was, that we heard from um, Beverly Wakem and the Select Committee as to the constitutional breach of not having these um, public, these entities that obtain public funding from being scrutinised through the Official Information Act. And the only real excuse I think that, you can, that we can take out of this is that this government wants to hide the financial information. They want to hide, not only, not only can they... Are they not... Right, Mr Mallard has, Mr Hatt Mallard has another um, thesis. My thesis is that following on from John Banks and his obvious failures, er, failures around disclosing financial information, Right and transparency that this that he is ensuring that these these charter schools will not have to disclose financial information because don't forget these these schools will be getting bulk funding in large part for their property and for um, other services they'll be getting money to provide for special needs children but they won't be required to report if they choose not to they won't be required to report on how that money is being used and so. That is just another example of that. John Banks himself has failed, as we know. He can't even fill out his own electoral finance um, forms accurately after standing for local government. This is a man who doesn't know how to fill out his own forms around as required by the law. So, you know, and he, he has an interest in keeping that information secret, doesn't he? Those donations that he received and the financial information he received from his local... His local um, a government campaign. Yes, that's right. He's the only one who's in trouble for not filling out his own electoral inf uh, finance information forms accurately. The only one who's been um, held to account for trying to hide donations and financial information. And he wants to make sure that charter schools have that same opportunity to keep their financial information secret, just like he's been able to, well, at least just like he's tried to do. Because, of course, uh, John Banks wasn't quite as clever as the rest of the public, and yes, we're yet to see what the court thinks of all this business. But that can really, I think that is a major part of this, um, this deliberate intention to hide from the public gaze information that the school will hold about what it's doing. And if that school does not report fully 
It's financial information to the government, and Heke Pirata requires us to trust the, their contractual arrangements. We've seen that fail before. Uh, Nova Pay might be another one of those examples. Uh, we're expected to trust the contract, but that just simply won't work. The schools can hide this financial information, uh, won't make it available to the public, won't make it available to the parents of the kids who are affected by it, and therefore, you know, able to hide the extent to which they're making a profit. And I think that's where it comes down to. Too. This is at the end of the day. This is only about setting up an institution that can suck money out of the public purse. And that, that, is, that is the ultimate purpose behind this. There is no other, there's no laudable goal here, Mr Speaker. I call the Honourable Member Simon O'Connor.